everyone! This is Hachiri. Alright, so today's episode is going to be a little short and it's basically going to be a little tutorial about IC2 crop breeding. Now, the reason I ended up getting into this is because during stream I was trying to get Glowflower, um, specifically the Pam's Glowflower, to grow on a forestry farm. That didn't happen. Didn't happen at all. So I ended up having to do some crop breeding. And I happen to have had some uh, blaze reed seeds. And I have been in the process of uh, breeding them and getting various things. One of which was this to the left here. And we'll go over that in a second. But uh, while researching and trying to find information on IC2 crop breeding, I realized that... Um, it's kind of few and far between. So what I'm going to do here today is uh, we're going to kind of go over this. Now, to begin with, you have to use IC2 crops, okay? And you need some sort of uh, seed that will go in said crop. Now the IC2 crops is just some long wooden sticks. You basically can take a uh, log of any type, stick it in a lathe, you're going to get four of these, just enough for a crop. Okay. Now you plant your seeds in there, and as you see, like we got a, a fresh one right here that just started. Like in this case, Blaze Fruit has four stages. Depending on the plant, it'll have a different number of stages for growth. And um, now this says four stages. It starts at one of four. So if it's four, it's actually three, three stages of growth. Okay. And they have differing statistics, um, growth, gain, resistance. And then for the crop sticks, there's also fertilizer, water, and weed X. There's also statistics such as nutrients, humidity, and air quality. And these all play a part in not only how the crop grows, but also, um, you know, what you get from the crop. Okay. So, first off, in order to um, start this, you grab a seed of some sort. In my case, I had seed bags already from a loot bag, but you can also do wheat. You can do um, sugar cane. And sugar cane is actually a good one. You could also do um, like a good way to really, really start with the crossbreeding uh, would be like sugar cane and say nether wart as an example. Um, but basically you get two seeds and even if you have two of the same seed okay you may not necessarily get the same crop and the reason that is is if we take a look at these blaze uh reed seeds here uh this one's this one's not showing it uh, does it show it if I scan it? Let's find out. Yes. Okay. So you see the attributes here in the bottom left. The attributes say fire, blaze, reed, and sulfur. Okay. And this was like an alternate one that I got. And I'll scan it just to show you. And you notice this one says magic, blaze, and nether. So if we take a look at the two... You notice how they both have blaze in it, and then the others are different? Well, the reason that I got this as a crossbreed instead of getting another blaze breed is this is another variant that also had a similar stat to these. Okay? Now, to crossbreed, you first get two crops that are fully grown. Okay, so you plant them uh, kind of like so. You know a block away from each other it could be across um, or it could be at a diagonal like so and then you want to place a crop down and then you want to place another one all right and what this will do is it will take the attributes 
between these two. Now this process can take a little bit. It can be as quick as a few minutes, you know, as a, a few seconds, or it can be as long as 10, 15 minutes. Um, and after it crossbreeds, you're going to get a crop in the middle. Now, in this case, I ended up getting a, another blaze reed. It has a stat of one, zero, and two for the resistance growth and gain. And you see, we got a zero, two, two here. We got a one, zero, two here. Um, we got a one, two, two. So it's not the greatest, but given the fact that I just lost a bunch of them due to weeds, uh, cause I went away. Um, you know what? I, I'll, I'll accept it. So, when you crossbreed it, you have a chance of getting the same crop at better stats, at lesser stats, or a new crop entirely, or weeds. You can get weeds. And if you get weeds, you want to use this tool right here, a weeding trowel, and you want to get rid of it as quickly as possible by right clicking with the weeding trowel and just putting another crop up. Now, Let's see, do we have another one of these that's almost complete? That's at 26%, that's at 82%. Uh, these are fully grown here. So um, we'll, we'll let that cook for a little bit and we'll continue on this. So to harvest a crop, you will right click it and it could spit out the uh, product, okay? Which in this case is a glow if you want to get the seed, you have to left click a fully grown. So right click to harvest the product and keep it growing. Left click to harvest and try to get a seed bag. Now getting a seed bag like this is not guaranteed, okay? It is not guaranteed. But in my case, you know, I happen to get one at that point in time. Um. So that's basically how you harvest them. And the reason I'm growing this, we'll, we'll go, like I said, we'll go over that in a second. But just remember, right click gets you the product, left click gives you, breaks the plant and gives you a chance at a seed. But you only have a chance if it's at to where it can harvest is yes. So it says optimal harvest, okay? Now, the different stats in this, growth, gain and resistance they all have different meanings growth is the speed at which the plant grows and progresses through its stages okay this is something that you want to get pretty high but you don't want it to go beyond a certain point otherwise it will actually start acting like weeds and take over adjacent plants with a lower growth rating or a lower resistance rating okay so that they recommend it starts spreading like that around 24 so they recommend around 21 growth is the optimal level to get it don't go above 21 if you can help it gain is one so yeah so growth that's the double-edged sword is it grows faster but it can spread like weeds okay so you got to maintain them gain is also a double-edged sword. all of these have a double edge to them gain gives you more of the product per harvest, but a lesser chance at getting seeds the higher it is, okay? So the higher the gain is, the lesser chance you're gonna get seeds, all right? But the more product you get per harvest. Resistance is, um, the higher it is, the higher chance you'll get seeds. The more resistant it is to weeds and to um, being trampled on. So like if I was to walk across it, you know, I could damage the plant. Um, with a high resistance, it's resistant to that. But at the same time, the higher resistance, the less chance of it crossbreeding, okay? So if you're trying to crossbreed for new crops, you do not want a high resistance um, because it will prevent that, okay? Now, the several part underneath the plant section, fertilizer, water, and weed X, these are representative to things that have been done to the plant. So fertilizer and water um, both 
help with the growth and the speed at which the plant grows okay water increases humidity fertilizer increases nutrients and you can use a lot of different things for fertilizer you can actually use the ic2 fertilizer you can use seeds you can use bone meal and all of which will add a little bit of fertilizer to that and you see it goes down after a little bit um, to add water you need to make a thing called a hydration cell and what that is is you basically take a cell of water and you put it in an extractor and when it comes out you'll get this hydration cell and once you empty the hydration cell you put the empty hydration cell in a centrifuge and you will get an empty cell again that's how that's how you get your cell back okay so yeah fertilizer and water help with growth speed and nutrients and the chance of getting stats etc okay the second thing that helps with growth is air quality now I have a low air quality because it's less than eight blocks above it and there's crops all around basically for every block around the crop that's filled it lowers the air quality um, and if it doesn't have access to the sky it takes a penalty as well if I was doing this outside um, I, I wouldn't really have an issue, but because I'm not, eh. Um, and then the Weed X one, Weed X prevents weeds, but if you use too much Weed X, it uh, basically damages the plant. And this is not a stat that goes away. Once you use Weed X on a seed, it will forever have that flag throughout its entire cross beating process. So essentially, you never want to use weed X. You just want to till the weeds out. Never use weed X. It, it, it just kills it. it. You'll never have really good crops with it. Yeah, you won't have weeds, but you, you won't have any good crops. Okay? So yeah, that's basically the things you need to worry about that. Um, this is taking forever to crossbreed and uh, the uh, reason I was going over this like I said is I had a lot of trouble finding information about that and then I was like trying to breed just to get uh, plants for the um, the glow flower and as you see we ended up getting weeds so we're going to uh, right click this here with the trial and get that out of there but uh, yeah that's essentially what all the stats are for it um, you want to balance the stats without going too high on any of them really um, I would say probably 10 to 20 across the board would be good but if you're trying to get um, if you're trying to initially get seeds, then I would focus on trying to keep the stats uh, as for gaining resistance low and just get growth um, up to a certain point. Now, during the crossbreeding process, and I was trying to get the glow flower, I ended up getting a very unique seed, which was the glow mushroom, the blue glow, the blue glow shroom, and the reason. Uh, this is so interesting is because the blue glow shroom works just like the Pam's flower. Two blue glow shroom, 15 seconds in an extractor, gives you glow stun. And why this is significant is with this and growing these, we can now set up our forestry farm to get glowstone and build all the machines. So we we went from the the crossbreeding and uh, went from there. But uh, yeah, that's that's why I have the glow shrooms growing over here. I managed to get glow shroom from two blaze reed. So if you manage to get blaze reed from a quest reward you can get glow shroom too to get your glow stone so that 
that was a short little segue there. But uh, one other thing about crops is certain crops require um, require special things. Take the plumbilia seeds, okay? The plumbilia seeds are used to grow plumbilia leaf, okay? Which is used in getting lead. You can either multiply lead or, or you can extract it for tiny piles of lead. That's what the purpose of this is. All right, and if you notice, this crop says it requires lead ore or a block of lead as soil underneath. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the farmland itself needs to be soil. What it's referring to is that it needs a block directly underneath it, underneath the soil block, kind of like the other resource blocks. And that's what's required to harvest these. Now, I don't know if... Um, you can do a double layer on a forestry farm. I have yet to test that. I think you might be able to, but I'm not entirely certain. I will test it um, in creative because I'm not going to waste my rare seeds on this. But uh, I will see if I can get that to grow underneath. And if so, fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, that's... That's basically it. Some seeds require a thing to grow. You won't really know if they do unless you check the tool tip or um, it'll hit its middle stage and then say it can't grow any further. And if you look up the seed, in this case it's cinder pearl, um, it will tell you what it needs underneath it to continue growing. And if you dig underneath and you place a blog under, it will continue to its final stage. And I think that is about it. So we'll wrap up this episode. And when we come back, we will actually build our glowstone farm and go over the process for that and what we're going to do with all the byproducts. So you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you on the next episode. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, that's all for today. Please subscribe, like, and comment down below and tell me your thoughts. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.